It's time for Laughs with Mr. Thomas. Yo ho ho! We have made it on to lesson number two of Recurrence Relations and this one is looking at some worded problems. So to introduce these, I want to take you back to last year when you had your percentage questions, such as this one. The value of a house appreciates by 4% per year. Remember, appreciates means it goes up. If right now it is worth £130,000, find the value after three years. So to answer that, you could have done it one of two ways. You could work out 4% of the 130000 and add it on, then work out 4% of that and add it on, then 4% of that and add it on. Or I imagine most of you did it the quick way using multipliers. Remember to work out the multiplier because it was going up by 4%. You had 100 add your 4% and then divide by 100. That's how you found the multiplier. Then after that, to work out the value, you used the multiplier to the power of the number of years times the original. So for this one, you would have said the multiplier would be 1.04 because it's 100 add 4, which is 104, divided by 100 is 1.04. And then to work out the value, you took the multiplier, did it to the power of 3, because it's in 3 years' time, and you multiplied that by the original value of the house, and you got your answer. The reason we could have used multipliers for that question is because each new year the value will be 4% higher than the previous value. So really, after 3 years, you're working out the 104% of the 104% of the 104% of the amount. Really, because each new value is based on the previous one though, we can also use recurrence relations. Let's go to this example and I'll show you how to do it with a recurrence relation. So example number one. Similar question, same numbers. The value of a house appreciates by 4% per year. Just now it's worth 130,000. First of all, set up a recurrence relation and use this to find the value after three years. So remember the recurrence relations are always of the form UN plus one equals A UN plus B. So to do that, you're thinking, well, if it's going up by 4%, very, very similar to multipliers, 100 add four is 104, divide by 100 is 1.0. Four. So you're thinking that first of all. Then you can set up a recurrence relation saying UN plus one, in other words, the next year's value is going to be 104% or 1.04 times the previous value. So that's how you find the value of A. Obviously, you're not adding anything on, you're not subtracting anything, it's just going to be 1.04 times the previous value. What you can say though is that U0, so right at the start, the house is worth 130,000, so U0 is 130,000. So that's us set up our recurrence relation, and now we can go through it and work out the value after three years. So you can say, well after U0 you have U1, so U1 would equal, and again recurrence relations, it's based on the previous value, so it's A times the previous value, or in this case 1.04 times the previous value, so it's 1.04 times U0 and U0 is that 130,000. So it's 1.04 times 130,000, which gives you the value after one year. After that, for U2, for the second value, again, you do 1.04 times the previous amount, so it's 1.4 times U1. Subbing in the values, you've got 1.04 times the 135,200, and you get the next value, so after two years. And finally, U3, so in three years' time, again, it's 1.04 times the previous value, so 1.04 times U2. Substitute in your numbers, and you will get the value. Just make sure when you answer your question, you will have two numbers after the decimal. It is dealing with money, this question. Make sure you don't go to one decimal place. That wouldn't make sense. Therefore, you could say that after three years, the house will be worth £146,232.32. Now we know what you're thinking. I can hear Olivia shouting at the screen. She's saying, why would you bother doing this? Surely using multipliers and doing it the old way from National 5 is so much easier and so much quicker. And Olivia, you are perfectly right. However, 
In higher, what you've also got is you have to add or subtract something on the end. So sometimes we also have something to add or subtract every single day or week, month or week or year. And for these questions, multipliers, the old fashioned way, will not work. However, your recurrence relations will. So what I'm going to do is show you a second example, uh, something similar that you would get in higher in the exam. And you've got to be able to answer something like this. So example two, a balloon contains 2000 millilitres of air and is being inflated by mouth. Each puff inflates the balloon by 15%, but at the same time, 100 millilitres of air escapes. So first of all, set up a recurrence relation to describe this situation. And after that, how much air will be in the balloon after three puffs? So the first thing you want to think for this is a recurrence relation. So UN plus one equals AUN plus B. So we need to think about what we're multiplying our previous value by. Again, similar to multipliers, because it's inflating by 15%, it's going up by 15%. So 100 add 15 is going to be 115%. Change that into a fraction as 115 over 100, which gives us 1.15. So you can say for your recurrence relation, UN plus 1 equals 1.15 UN. However, with this one, that's increasing by 15%, but at the same time, 100 millilitres of air escapes. Now, it's not 100% escapes, okay? It's 100 millilitres escapes. So you can then say that you're also going to be subtracting 100. That is going to be your recurrence relation to describe the situation. So UN plus 1 equals 1.15 UN minus 100. So for part B, how much air will be in the balloon after three puffs? So right at the start, U0 is what we have to write down. We have to start with that. So U0 is going to be 2,000, because we know there's 2,000 uh, millilitres in the balloon just now. After one puff then, we'd work out U1. And using our recurrence relation, we've got 1.15 UN minus 100. So it's going to be 1.15 multiplied by the previous term, u0, take away 100. So subbing in the numbers, we've got 1.15 take away 2,000, uh, times 2,000, take away 100, which will then give us 2,200. Doing the same thing with u2, so u2 is going to be 1.15 times the previous amount, take away 100. So 1.15 times U1, take away 100. Substitute in your numbers. This time we know U1. We just worked that out. It's 2,200. So it's 1.15 times 2,200, take away 100. And you'll get how much is in the balloon after two puffs. And for three puffs, to work out U3, we do the same thing. 1.15 times the previous amount, take away 100. So 1.15 times U2, Take away 100, substitute in your numbers. So 1.15 times U2 was 2,430. Take away 100 gives us 2,694.5. Therefore, you can say that after three puffs, the volume will be 2,694.5 millilitres. Just remember your units. Okay. Let's try one more example. Example three. This time, let's give you the whole question. A patient is injected with 160 millilitres of a drug. Every six hours, 25% of the drug passes out of her bloodstream. And to compensate, every six hours, a further 20 millilitres is given. So part A, similar to the last question, find a recurrence relation for the amount of a drug in her bloodstream and for part B, calculate the amount of the drug in her bloodstream after 24 hours. So very, very similar. For part A, we want to create a recurrence relation. So we've got UN plus 1 equals AUN 
plus b. So this time we're looking at the percentage and we see that after 6 hours 25% of the drug passes out. So it's disappearing from her system, it's going down the way the amount is decreasing. So you want to think, right, well, you're starting at 100, you always start at 100, and you're taking away 25%. This will give you 75%, which is a fraction is 75 over 100, which gives you 0 0.75. Therefore, your recurrence relation will be un plus 1 equals 0 0.75 times the previous amount. That's the first part of the recurrence relation. We know it's going down by 25% every single time. But it also tells us that to compensate every 6 hours, a further 20 millilitres is given. So we know that after 6 hours it will be topped up by 20 so you'll be adding on 20. Again, you don't have to do this bit with percentages because it's not 20%, it's just 20 millilitres. For part B, calculate the amount of the drug in our bloodstream after 24 hours. So to start that bit, you want to again say, well, right at the start, there was 160 millilitres. So use zero before anything even started. There was 160. After that, well, it's telling you it's every six hours that it's de increasing. Okay, and every six hours it's going to increase by 20. So you know after six hours, to work out U1, you would say that it's 0 0.75 times the previous amount, which is U0, plus 20. Substitute in the values, we know U0 is 160, so 0 0.75 times 160, plus 20, will give us the amount after six hours. After another six hours, so after 12 hours, that'll be U2. So U2 is going to be 0 0.75 times the previous amount, plus 20. So 0 0.75 times U1, plus 20. Substitute in your numbers, replace uh, U1 with 140, and we will get 125. After that, another 6 hours will be 18 hours. So that's 0 0.75 times the previous amount, U2, plus 20. Replace U2 with 125 and then add 20, and you'll get 113.75. And after 24 hours, which is what we're wanting in the question, we do 0 0.75 times the previous amount, U3 plus 20. Replace U3 with 113.75, and it gives us 105.3125. Obviously it's too many decimal places. What I would say after that is that after 24 hours, there will be 105.31 millilitres remaining in the bloodstream. And you can just round it to one or two decimal places. But that's how you answer these questions. Okay, the tricky part is maybe coming up with the recurrence relation, and then the second part is just going to be doing what you were doing earlier uh, with that last uh, lesson. Give some of these a shot. If you're not sure about anything, just let me know. Think about how well you're finding these as well. As I said, let me know if you need help with it. Good luck. Enjoy.